Thank you everyone for staying with me on the continuation of our series on VECM and three ways causality test in STATA. On the screen, I've listed some prerequisite videos that will give you a full knowledge of what I'm about to do right now. Endeavor to watch the videos on VAR and three ways causality checks, after which you watch the one on how to specify vector error correction models. Next is a VECM estimation discussion and diagnostics video. And lastly, make sure you watch the one on VECM and three ways causality checks, part one. Given the prerequisite videos I just showed you now, I'm going to skip steps one to four because it will amount to repetition. So I'm going straight on to steps five to seven just to show you how to estimate VAR and extract causality information from your results. So let's move over to Stata and take out a practical example. On the screen are the three variables I'll be using in their log forms, PDI, PCE, and GDP. And I'll be using a quarterly data from 1970 quarter one to 1991 quarter four. In my usual practice, I have my log file on. So make sure if you're a Stata lister, you always have a log file. It keeps track of what you've done and you can easily reproduce your work. Also, I have my do file ready with all the commands to be executed. Having a do file makes your life easier. You don't have to go to the menu to be clicking. Just highlight and run the command. So the first thing to do is run the tset quarterly command. I'm using quarterly because I have a quarterly data. If you don't run this command, Stata will not run your time series analysis. So I've highlighted the command and I click the run button. So here you can see we are ready to run all our time series analysis. Like I said, I'm going to skip steps one to four and move on to step five which is to estimate the vector error correction model. The command is already highlighted, but I'm going to show you the menu approach so that you can have the option of either using the menu approach or the command approach. To use the menu approach, you simply go to statistics, you click on multivariate time series, then you select vector error correction model. I've been here before, so I click RA to reset it. Under dependent variables, I list all the variables in the system. Remember, the variable you list first is the outcome variable. And you can see that all the variables are indicated in their log forms and not in their first difference. The reason is because Stata or the VEC algorithm will estimate them as first difference variables. So there is no need for you to indicate the variables here as first difference. For the number of cointegration equations, I'm indicating one, even though the Johansson cointegration test indicates two cointegration equations. To make interpretation simpler, always use one cointegration equation, unless you are very good at explaining your results. If not, it may be a little bit problematic if you use more than one cointegrating equation. For the maximum lag to be included in the underlying VAR, ordinarily is a K-1 model because it's a VEC model, but by leaving it at 2, Stata will estimate with 1 lag. So I'm going to leave this as 2. For trend specification, I'm using the unrestricted constant and no trend. Everything looks fine. I click OK. So our result is out. You can see here, this is the command we executed. It's exactly what I have in my do file. I'm aligning it now. I click Ctrl C. So this is how you can build a do file. So if I copy it here, it's exactly what I have before. Either use the command approach or the menu approach. So back to our results. Here is the output. And the waste theta result is each equation's result is stacked upon the other. So this is the result for PDI. This is the one for PCE. And the last segment is the one for GDP. But before I go ahead to start inferring causality, let me explain the long run equation here from where the error correction term is derived. Here is the Johansson normalization equation, and the underscore C1 here is the error correction term. So this is how the error correction term is generated. Because I indicated PDI as the outcome variable, the normalization is on the PDI variable. And I also specified a log-log formation. So that means the relationship among the variables is an elasticity relationship. And by interpretation, I'm going to give it an elasticity interpretation. Also, remember that when you are interpreting, you must reverse the signs. For instance, for PCE, a percentage change in PCE will result in a 3.63% increase in PDI. While for GDP, a percentage change in GDP will result in 
3.07% increase in PDI. So this is the error correction term which contains the long run information. So having explained how the error correction term is composed, let us now go ahead to infer causality from this vector error correction estimates. But let me point out something to you. Look at the way the variables are now specified upon estimation that they now have the different operators. Let's look at GDP. You see it has D log GDP. So whenever you want to feed in your variables into the status software for the VEC estimation, please feed it in either in their raw forms or in their log forms, but not in their first difference. Underscore C1 here is the error correction term, and here you have the short run variables. These are the coefficients, so this is the adjustment coefficient, and these are short run coefficients. So let's begin to interpret. We infer long run causality from the statistical significance of the error correction term. The coefficient is negative, which is a good sign, and the p value is point. 058. So we can say that there is long run causal effect in the PDI equation at the 10% level. For short run causal effect, looking at the PCE coefficient is also significant at the 10% level. So we can say that PCE causes PDI in the short run at the 10% level. But GDP does not cause PDI in the short run because the coefficient here is not statistically significant. Let's look at the PCE equation. The error correction term here is also negative, which is good, shows convergence to long run equilibrium. And we can see that the p-value is below 1%, so which tells us that in the long run, there is causality in the PCE equation at the 1% level. Looking at short-run causal effect, we can also infer causality from PDI to PCE at the 10% level. While for GDP, we cannot infer causality from GDP to PCE in the short run. So for the PCE equation, only PDI is significant in the short run to have any significant effect on it. Lastly, let's look at GDP equation. The error correction term is also negative, which is good, indicates convergence to long-run equilibrium. The p-value is also good, which shows long-run causal effects in the GDP equation. For short-run causal effects, we can see that PDI has a 1% significant short-run causal impact on GDP. However, PCE is not significant in the short run to have any significant causal effects on GDP. So this is how you infer causality from the T statistics of the regressors. And you infer long run causality from the T statistics of the error correction term. Now what about strong causal effects? Strong causal effects will occur if the error correction term is significant and the T statistics of the regressors are also significant. So that is how you can infer strong causality. So I have taken you through how you can infer causality using the outputs from the VEC model. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can infer causality using the wall test. The var grandeur command is not applicable to vector error correction. So we cannot use var grandeur when you are estimating the VECM. So stay with me, I'm going to show you how to use the wall test to check for causality in the vector error correction model. And again, we'll perform some diagnostics in the next video. If you need more references on how to understand the vector error correction model and in fact causality, please go through these textbooks. And if you have any simpler basic econometrics textbook, you can also go through it. Also look at several journals articles that use uh, the vector correction model and also tested for causality in their papers. Please stay with me, don't go away. There will be a concluding section where I show you how to test for causality in the vector error correction model. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button, leave your comments, share my videos and my links, tell your friends, Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users.